flag of France again flies among the banners of the great nations. The country that put liberty, equality and fraternity foremost among the aspirations of mankind resumes its rightful place in the van of civilization. History will probably date the full resurrection of France as coinciding with the visit to Paris of Winston Churchill. It was Armistice Day, the first one to be properly observed in Paris for four years. And in the beginning, it followed the honored ritual at the tomb of the unknown warrior. But at this hour, France was not looking back. France fixed her gaze ahead upon the unrolled years which confidently beckon on a nation splendidly reborn. It was indeed a triumphant scene that was enacted at the Arc de Triomphe. After that minute of homage, the Prime Minister and the General signed the Golden Book, inscribing the names of two stout-hearted men who kept alive their faith in France when millions despaired. General de Gaulle then presented medals to French and British soldiers and sailors. Then the Prime Minister walked with the General to the saluting base in the Champs Elysees. In the life of Paris, this was a truly great occasion, fully recognized as such by the vast concourse of people assembled to welcome the Prime Minister of England. the head of the most impressive martial procession with whose tread the Champs Elysees has ever resounded, a French band preceded the Republican Guard.
had taken an hour and a half for that spectacular representation of Allied military power to pass by. To the tremendous acclamation of the crowd, the Prime Minister took his place with General de Gaulle in an open car and slowly drove down the Great Avenue. Britain, America and Russia have invited France to be a full and permanent member of the European Advisory Commission. The great nation is reborn. In no small measure, that splendid event is owing to the faith and resolution of two great men, General de Gaulle and Winston Churchill.